Assalamu alaikum rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Today's Quranic wisdom is repeated not once but twice in the Quran, the exact same phrase in Surah Al Hashr and Surah Al Taghabun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Woman yuqa shuha nafsihi fa ulaika humul muflihun. Woman yuqa shuha nafsihi. Whoever manages to protect himself from his own greed, fa ulaika humul muflihun. That is the person who will be successful. Whoever can protect his own soul from his own greed. The greed is coming from within. If you can protect yourself from yourself, Allah is saying, These are the people that shall be successful. And this ayah comes exact same phrase, not once but twice in the Quran. And of course, the concept of greed, the concept of desiring, you want, you want, you want, you're never satisfied with whatever you have. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, and the hadith mentions, that this is one of the faults of mankind. The soul is constantly surrounded by the feeling of greed. Your nafs is always wanting more. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ خُلِقَ هَلُوعًا إِذَا مَسَّهُ الشَّرُّ جَزُوعًا وَإِذَا مَسَّهُ الْخَيْرُ مَنُوعًا Man has been created in a very feeble state. How so? The smallest problem comes and he begins complaining all the time. And the greatest good comes, if wealth or money comes, then he becomes the stingiest. Yani you're never happy. If the smallest irritation and nuisance, then complaining and grumbling and not happy. And if blessings upon blessings come, then you become stingy and you don't want to share with other people. So Allah is saying this is the reality of man. In fact, our Prophet Sallallahu said that Allah says the famous hadith Qudsi in Bukhari and Muslim. Our Prophet Sallallahu said that Allah says that man shall never be satisfied. If man, if a person were to have a mountain of gold, he would still desire to have another mountain. If he were to have a mountain of gold, his nafs would still be greedy for another. And nothing will satisfy his desire until the sand in the qabr fills his belly. Then he will be satisfied. It's an expression. Until you die and you enter the qabr, you will never be satisfied. And our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, it's a beautiful hadith in Sahih Muslim. A man continues to grow old, but two things remain young. A man continues to grow old, يَهْرَمُ rajul. But two things remain shape, remain, uh, uh, remain uh, upon the youth. What is that? Number one, الْحِرْصَ عَلَى الْمَالِ Wanting to have more wealth. And number two, to be more greedy for life and time as well. You always want more wealth and you always want a longer life. Doesn't matter how old you are, but your soul will remain young in its greed. So Allah is telling us in the Quran, Protect yourself from yourself. Protect yourself from that greed. And subhanAllah, another beautiful Quranic wisdom with regards to greed, with regards to spending. Allah references in the Quran that the more we are blessed with, the more greedy we become. The more we have, the more stingy. You know, you would think that that's not the case. But in reality, surveys and scientific and psychiatric studies have shown that people who don't have a lot are the most generous. People who are struggling are actually in their hearts, they're the most generous. And people who are blessed with millions or billions become the most stingy. And even, you know, these YouTube channels and whatnot, sometimes they have these experiments, social experiments. You give a homeless person something and it's going to willingly share. And the richest person is going to be the most stingy. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala references this in the Quran. If you had access to Allah's khazana, if you had access to Allah's treasure, which is infinite, if you had the keys to that, you would become stingy to give anything to anybody.
Allah is referencing that the more we have, generally speaking, the more stingy we become. And this is, as I said, an observed psychiatric and cultural reality that is referenced in the Quran and Sunnah. So the question arises, if we know that stinginess is destructive, and in fact, our Prophet said so in a beautiful hadith, three things are destroying of a person. Thalathun muhlikat. Three things destroy. Number one, he said that hawan muttaba'an. A person follows his desire. Whatever he wants, he does it. You need to control your desires in check. And that's why fasting is so important. And number two, shuhan muta'an. Greed that is obeyed. This is the same concept. Shuh. Greed that you obey. You want something. You're always eager for it. And number three, he said a person being conceited with himself, having a self-centered arrogance. Point being, he literally said, greed is one of the things that destroys you. And you know, you don't even need to be religious to understand this. Even those who don't believe in God, they know that greed is a vice. Always wanting something is a vice. Why? Because the greedy person, number one, is the most selfish, the least compassionate. The greedy person, number two, is never satisfied with life never satisfied and number three greed causes you to do evil to fall into haram our prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said hadith is in bukhari iyyakum wa shuh i warn you of greed because greed destroyed the nations before you greed caused them to kill one another and go to war and by the way what is war caused by the number one cause of war in the world is greed for other possessions, is natural resources that you want. That greed is destructive for mankind. So Allah says, وَمَنْ يُوقَ شُحَّ نَفْسِهِ فَأُولَيْكَهُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ Question rises very quickly. How does one overcome one's own greed? How does one overcome the shuh that is in the qalb, in the heart? A number of things we find in the Quran and Sunnah. First and foremost, is to understand what we should really be greedy for is that which is eternal and not that which is temporary. What you have will all be gone. And what is with Allah will be forever. So stop being greedy for the temporary and start becoming eager for the permanent. And this leads me to the second Quranic point about overcoming greed. And that is start believing in the akhirah in a stronger manner because Allah links greed with not believing in the akhirah. If you don't believe in a hereafter, you're going to be greedy. Whoever is stingy and greedy and denies the day of judgment, denies Jannah. Notice how Allah linked between belief in Jannah and not being greedy versus being greedy and not believing in Jannah. And then number three of the ways we overcome greed is to understand that Allah is the Razzaq, the Mannan, the Kareem. Once we understand our rizq is not in the bank account, our rizq is not in my pocket. Inna Allah huwa Razzaq, Wallahu yarzuqukum. Allah is the Razzaq. Then it will allow us to give as our Prophet Sallallahu said to Bilal, O oh Bilal, spend and Allah will spend even more on you. Unfiq, you go ahead and spend, and Allah will spend on you. And one of the other things we'll mention, time is limited, but of course so much can be said. One other thing that is going to motivate us to overcome greed, and Ibn al-Qayyim mentions this, and also Ibn al-Jawzi and other great scholars, they said, if the stingy person were to only realize, even in a selfish mind, when you give unto others, what you gain of respect and love is more precious than what you kept in your pocket if you didn't give. Even from a purely secular perspective, when you spend on others, you gain their love, their trust. You gain the mahabba of the people. And that is more precious and more useful to you than that which you we're wanting to be stingy about. And that's why our Prophet ﷺ said, Allah is Kareem and He loves Karam. And the people love the one who is Kareem as well. So brothers and sisters, 
give for the sake of Allah. And by give, I don't just mean charity. Give everything to your loved ones, to the people around you. Give your charity of happiness, of smile, of akhlaq, of time. Give for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And one warning, especially to the youth and those that are feeling, inshallah, if I had, I will be very, very uh, 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 ge generous. Be careful that you don't have these grandiose notions because Allah warns us in the Quran, وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ عَاهَدَ اللَّهَ لَإِنْ آتَانَا مِنْ فَضْلِهِ لَنَصَّدَّقَنَّ وَلَنَكُنَّنَّ مِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ فَلَمَّا أَتَاهُمْ مَا فَلَمَّا أَتَاهُمْ مِنْ فَضْلِهِ بَخِلُوا بِهِ وَتَوَلَّوْا So the, there were people, the hypocrites, they promised Allah. They said, Oh Allah, we promise you, if you give us, you will find us to be of the most generous. Allah says, when Allah gave of Allah's bounty, they turned around and they became the stingiest. فَأَعْقَبَهُمْ نِفَاقًا فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ Because of this, they became munafiqeen. So don't pretend that if you have wealth, you're going to be pious. Rather say, oh Allah, bless me with wealth and make me pious. Don't say, oh Allah, if you give me, I promise you I'm going to be. You don't know. Rather say, oh Allah, give me from your ghina, give me from your barakah, give me from your rizq, and make me from the salihin and generous. Never ever, goes back to my yesterday's talk, فَلَا تُزَكُّ أَنفُسَكُمْ Never think you have that level of piety. Give for the sake of Allah, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah will give to you. Save yourselves from your own selves, own shuh, your own greed, and whoever does so will be victorious. May Allah make us amongst them.